Welcome to the Dividend Talk Podcast, episode 129. Our learnings from 2022 and our wishes for 2023. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dividend Talk. Today we're going to close out the year by talking about what we've learned for the whole of 2022 and maybe some of our goals for next year. All that and more. See you on the inside. Hey, European DJ. How are you, buddy? Really, really good. 2022 is coming to an end, and it was a great year. So from one side, it's, of course, quite a pity, but I'm so I'm, I'm, I'm so full of dopamine to get started for 2023. And, of course, first of all, with a big bang tomorrow at New Year's Eve. How about yourself, buddy? Yeah, it's been, hey, it's been a heck of a year, and lots, lots of stuff happened this year i know we tried to fill out some of the show notes and there's been so much that has happened over the years so we'll try and cram in what what we've learned and maybe what we would like or what we would hope to happen going forward next year but let's let's maybe reflect on some of the news of the year um what's been the standout what's been one of the standout things for you this year well unfortunately it's really the war uh, from russia invading ukraine so that that has been really having an impact on on my portfolio on my private life we had uh, ukrainians here sheltering for 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 some time um the shock it did to this to the, to the stock market as well uh, the energy prices inflation i mean it's really cruel what's happening there i'm glad it's still on a daily basis in the news it's not anymore of course frightening everyone in the west um, for us, it's still relatively nearby. It's really visible. Lots of Ukrainians around us here. We're still uh, lots of food uh, going to, going to the people. Um, so that has been definitely the the biggest highlight, although really negative, uh, I would say, of the year because it it kind of impacted me on all all sides. Of course, not like someone living in Ukraine. I can't even compare uh, myself to it. But when it comes to to the impact to my investments, the 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 um, uh, the the time spent, the personal life, uh, I would definitely say that one. Yeah, I mean, it's had such a knock-on effect across a lot of the big things that happened. For example, the oil and gas. Uh, we, we know energy prices went through the roof at, at some point because of the war. So that impacted positively on on some of our some of our portfolio, and and the cash flows generated by these companies because of these high prices allowed them then to go and and generate buybacks and pay extra dividends and mm -hmm. so it's had both i would say a positive and negative effect on on parts of our portfolios yeah yeah definitely and definitely but you know for instance the inflation uh, it's not only the war there was also supply chain issues that we had uh, um, last year and such right um the interest hikes uh, from from jerome powell and also the ecb starting that that all 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 is well, I, actually, there was probably more to control inflation, but it's all impacting our portfolio at that moment uh, in time. But I think in general, the worst is probably still the human disaster around it, right? If you see all the fugitives that uh, had to happen. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I truly wish that for 2023, there comes a bit of peace in the region. And if that impacts my portfolio a little bit more negatively, then, then so be it. Yeah, yeah. And what, as always, t Twitter has always goes through phases, don't it? We have different personalities and, and different phases. But this year seems to be a lot of scammers and influencers and and all these kind of getting, I would say, caught out. And and we've had a lot of a lot of news in say the crypto world, for example, where a lot of people have got burnt and and lost a lot of money. And, so yeah for me this is amazing right over the last few years since we are active on social media how often did we hear like oh yeah you guys not gonna make it uh why why not investing in crypto and our, our narrative has always been the same we, we understand blockchain well enough to see value in it rather invest in companies blue chip companies or, or companies that are 
um, how I said, investing in blockchain, but we don't really see how we can put any logical valuation or price on, on, on cryptocurrency, right? Not even on Bitcoin. So that that's maybe a knowledge gap or not. I, I don't know. Um, but I do know that if it's so hard to understand that, um, and I have personally, I've got a master degree, so it doesn't mean I come from an egg, then there's probably something wrong there. Yeah. And what we have seen um, this year is not so much that, how you said, Bitcoin itself has proven to not have value. I, I, I don't believe that. But the amount of scammers, right? The amount of get rich quick schemes and pyramid schemes that we have seen. It started, of course, I think the big one with Celsius going bust. And Celsius, you know, the yield, the yield farming, uh, it was always too good to be true. They said we cut out the banks, the middlemen, you get directly. But in the end, they were just, in my opinion, still borrowing money from, from the customer to, to, to fund the yields, right? FTX gets bust. Then we have Logan Paul, this really famous YouTuber that uh, was just exposed by CoffeeZilla about creating a game where you could also, you know, invest in the tokens. And 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 and, and then if you hear the insights, it was just one big scam and pyramid scheme again. And and this is this is a learning, right? We have seen that in the early 2000s when you study that with the with the internet bubble, is when there are these bubbles, it attracts a lot of people that are really the least shady yeah in, in their um in their intentions and honestly sometimes i think these scammers they don't necessarily realize yet in the beginning that they are scamming but then they get caught up in it and have no way out and really you know uh, continue continue making mistake over mistake over mistake right and they end up being a scammer what i mean with this is like i think sometimes people that really get rich quick really don't understand the impact of what they are doing and might not fully grasp that they are um, not having an organic return but actually a return which is borrowing customers money this my complaint also, also always about finfluencers yeah. many of them are not transparent in their um in their performance they don't say how they have generated the performance but for instance someone like graham stefan and such they get so much money from deals with with affiliates including ftx and so much in uh, money from uh, advertising income that you really can't say uh, where it comes from and is this then allowing to grow their portfolio just the net cash contribution or is it really their stock picks that are driving uh, uh, a lot of growth right yeah i, I mean I, I agree. Just go back to an earlier point you make. I, d I don't think any of these people set out to to scam people. I, I think they genuinely believe in their projects and they get to a place. It reminds me of um, Katie uh, Elizabeth Elizabeth Holmes in Bad Blood. Remember, she started that biotech company that was going to cure diabetes. I you, made a machine and she just got out of hand and it just spiraled and spiraled and spiraled and the so, fake it so, till you make it mantra right it, so they exactly. know they know that they fake it yeah yeah so i think it's i think it's a similar situation with with these guys and and they just can't admit that they're wrong and that they're going to lose and, and make a mistake so it's a it's a shame but i feel sorry for the people that because it, it they are it is unregulated it is an unprotected world people go in there because of the risk uh, to reward ratio you, you risk it big but you can make it people make a lot of money but the risk is still always there and that's that's the problem the risk is sometimes too great and it's the guys that lose all the money i feel i feel sorry for because it's generally people like me or you are just average joes that get in too late and they they get fomo and they don't want to miss a good thing and and uh, Billy down the street is after making two thousand euro effort, so I want to make two thousand euro, and and it it just snowballs. So it's been it's been a learning year, particularly in, in crypto. I, I agree with you. Blockchain is there; it can be used. I think the one thing crypto needs is the one thing it doesn't want, which is regulation. I think that's the appeal of crypto, yeah. isn't it? That it's not regulated, and yeah. but let's be honest, regulation is not always. A bad thing over regulation can be but I, I still think there's some level of regulation need and i, I don't think it would be the consumer yeah yeah, and, and yeah most of these consumers are being scammed as we can see so you know it's it's your money right and um you know we even had with the hero the other day again uh, the the internet broker right that we all use 
um, was also again in the news because the the German watchdog was uh, giving them, uh, you know, a reprimanda, let's say, that they had to fix things, you know, and, and that's good. Imagine if the German watchdog wouldn't uh, look after those brokers because all our assets are there. Well, not exactly. all, but uh, we diversify. But you know, this this reality here. Yeah. Yeah, and and look. With with this news, we've also had a, a rake of dividend hikes this year, haven't we? And and uh, I think I've mentioned before one of the things I've learned this year, particularly in this environment where we've we've never navigated such a such an environment where so many variables were, I want to say, going wrong, or so many variables working against the market at the same time. Um, and what I've noticed is the cream has started to 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 raise to the top, and it's always the quality companies that seem to come out on top. And we've had some whopper whopper dividend increases this year like l'oreal sticks out to me l'oreal is, is a lipstick company and we're in a high inflationary environment where you think people don't need to buy lipstick or bags or jewelry or whatever else but these guys make enough cash flow to generate a 20 percent dividend hike throughout the year i mean that's that's sensational yeah 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 definitely and, and then maybe disclosure it was based on the 2021 earnings right so 2022 earnings uh might might be different but also if you look at the numbers there nothing shows that this, this will stop anytime soon so for me this is just like like crazy but also you know a postal service like ups a 49 percent hike now tell me about what a confidence you have in yourself then as a company right uh, in a low margin business yeah i mean they can't they they really did cash in they 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 caught the market at the right time didn't they but yeah to be fair the extra cash they made they're rewarding their shareholders and it's probably too late to invest in them in this moment i think they're probably yeah. overpriced but i mean and this is one of those companies that i often regret or, or shy away from the same with um fedex but with ups I, I i really had i was really having my finger on the trigger to buy them at 100 dollars or something like that i think they're now around 170. yeah and i believe it was yielding then maybe three or four four percent let's say four percent for the ar for the argument's sake um but every time when i look at their balance sheet i think like oh i don't want to own it because of the retirement uh, obligations pension obligations that they have and such and then they come with a 49 percent hike and i think like am i the idiot here you know and then i'm investing in a in a company like fiatris or upfi that has also poor balance sheets yeah but i i guess the story around this is different i see that they are really focused on paying that down and and and, and being in the right uh, position going forward right and ups i don't hear this so 49 percent. everyone who owns ups congratulations guys it was one of the biggest but not the biggest right no not not the biggest we've got yeah hey, european companies are not coming out too bad this year are they so we've got hermes international with a whopping 75 percent dividend increase yeah the That's stupid incredible. stuff that they sell remember yeah. when we looked at it we were looking live <laughs> yeah. at the show like like this was it this this wooden elephant or something exactly. like that exactly i mean the prices I was buying this crap but i mean they were able they were able to increase the dividend by 75 percent. so somebody's obviously buying it somewhere but even even that's not the biggest the biggest one has to go to asml a hundred percent dividend increase yeah. this year they, they just doubled it and they also switched from annual dividend to quarterly dividend even so it's not just a five euro fifty that, that you would have gotten this year but also already one or two quarterly payments yeah, but I mean, uh, what, what did they say? They are the shovel and the gold rush, right? And they, they are the only one that can produce the shovel uh, effectively. So, I mean, an awesome, awesome company. Awesome company and 100% dividend hike. Wow. I like the, the switch to quarterly. I mean, it, may, it makes no difference. I know you're getting the same amount of money, but I think, I think for a European company to say, we're going to pay you quarterly, I think what they're saying is we are committed to this dividend. Yeah, exactly fully, fully committed we're following the american pathway we're yeah. doing four payments a year and, and we are totally committed so i'm 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 happy that they've done that i'm just not happy that i only own fractional shares of these based on the trading 212 pie that i have <laughs> investing every month i um, talk about quarterly shares uh let's remind ourselves about castellum when this rutger arnhold came in 
They also yeah. went to quarterly, I believe. I think it was still him who made the decision. And now uh, they, they propose <laughs> to not pay a dividend. Yeah. What an idiot. What an idiot. We should have him on the show one time because he's stepping out now also as a CEO. So maybe he can talk freely. But uh, yeah, yeah. So maybe to our listeners, if anyone knows Rutger Ar Arnold, uh, check if he wants to come on the show. Don't necessarily tell him that I've called him an idiot. Maybe just tell him that I called him not so smart. <laughs> <laughs> potato potato <laughs> <laughs> uh, look it'd be it'd be interesting and maybe our our perspective or your perspective might change of him actually speaking to him we don't know what goes on behind of, of course doors, of course so. um what about black uh black rock is up there is another one yeah yeah there, there are just some some stocks here that we still have in this list and and it's a bit arbitrary we could have picked a dozen of others as well but the amount of companies like dividend aristocrats just generally already years and years or decades of dividend growth still hiking double digits like blackrock 18 percent but walters kluwer still right maintaining these uh legal and healthcare databases plus 15 percent snap on yeah uh, some some drills and such plus 14 percent and broadcom plus 12 percent i mean traditional dividend stocks giving these kinds of hikes wow I love I love when we talk about a uh, snap on because I, I always remember the first time somebody it was it was in one of our questions someone yeah. asked us what do we think of snap on and you you said it sounded like strap on and you had no interest <laughs> in it and then we got a couple of emails saying guys I think you need to go back to that question look at this company and we did and we're like oh man this is <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> yeah. a serious company yeah yeah we missed our opportunity to buy by just being plain ignorant <laughs> exactly yeah so uh, that, it always makes me giggle when when i hear them name but yeah so but you know it's not but, the same as lang und schwarz right i think lang yeah. und schwarz and snap on would make a great combination uh, in, a, in, in a bit of a portfolio to spice it up for your wife right maybe you could set up a trading two one two point with just those two companies <laughs> <laughs> i tell you it uh, the only way is up <laughs> <laughs> and it will outperform i can tell you so 2022 what are your main reflections from the past year so so maybe good to mention uh, before as a disclaimer i still need to write my annual report i still need to do all my calculations so um some reflections might change and and also uh some might improve but just in general i wanted to share with you that my net dividend income so uh dividend after tax like cash on the balance sheet uh, on yeah, my balance sheet on my on my bank account grew with 56 percent year over year and this was the let's say the the eighth or or yeah the eighth year of properly investing yeah so eight and eight eight full years and three months so 56 percent in this year and i'm blown away by that that um it, it, it was definitely not expected but we touched a little bit on that i mean we should not forget that of course a favorable usd currency are unfavorable when it comes to investing the favorable to dividend uh income uh, you know the, the the currency dropped with what is it 15 to 20 percent depending on yeah. where you anchor it in the year now uh let's say half of my portfolio is in dollars that's already a 10 percent hike there yeah and in, in net if income of course i had to invest it back again uh against unfavorable uh, uh things but still you know for me just this reflection while the stock markets are down it's just a confirmation why I like this strategy so much. I mean, I, you and I don't care so much about share prices only on the day that we invest in a stock. Then we care about it, right? Our portfolio value, we look at it a bit, but even in the dashboard, it's all about dividend income. And to be able to say 56%, uh, it just makes me uh, humble. Yeah, this is so much cash. This is so, so much cash that is coming in already. I mean, fifty-six percent is is quite a jump. Um, I have to say, I'm I'm using your portfolio tracker online mm -hmm. after I deleted my one accidentally during the year, and I was just updating it just before the show. And would you believe, right? My net dividend income is up in around fifty-five percent. Ah, you're gonna be kidding me. <laughs> Honest, honestly, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's 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 crazy. <laughs> wow, wow. I, so I, it, I 
I can't believe that either. Like so, so I've hit, I've hit over. I don't, I, I openly talk about my figures, but I hit over three thousand in dividend income this year. Now there were some gimmicks. I did some dividend capture strategies and and mm -hmm. and that in between. But I think overall, I mean, I'm I have to be quite happy with with returning nearly yeah. just over three three thousand euro in dividends throughout the whole year. Wow, nice, nice. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't know how it was for you, but I did deploy a lot of cash in the stock market. So that's probably good to know. I have never deployed so much cash in a single year. The reason for that is, of course, lots of dividend income that I could reinvest uh, at the moment. There were some opportunities where I pulled a little bit money, uh, I said, uh, from cash that I still had on the sidelines, which I knew I should have invested already before. But also, what I always say, like, before you even invest, spend quality time at work. So I got a nice bonus uh, as well, which just helped me also to to you know put it all in the stock market. So if you add all those things up plus a favorable dollar, yeah, then it, it's actually not a surprise that it grows this much. I just didn't expect that this would be such a year this year. Yeah, and definitely not after two years of all these shit stonks going up. Um, I couldn't have seen this coming and also we've been able to buy bigger uh, higher yield stocks this year because the stock market went down so also that is again we get more bang for our buck right yeah so yeah I, I think I think you gave some advice last week I don't know if it was a question last week and you put it again out on Twitter about the share price if if you were to zoom out of, of your portfolio and, and delete share price and just yeah. look at at your net dividend income you would not know that this year has been a shit show in the financial market all yeah. you will see is that nice pretty graph that i can see in front of me of it increasing quite rapidly throughout the year and i think that's probably a big a big learning for me as well trying to trying to zoom out a little bit and i know we always say we're, we're dividend growth investors focus on the dividend growth but it's hard sometimes when you're in the daily grind and stock yeah. prices are going up and down and everybody's talking about it and really when the stock drops it, it's in the news more people are talking about it more mm -hmm. it gets your attention more so it's hard to zoom out but if, if you could at all forget about the, the share prices you would have to say investing in this style would be a lot more easier and digestible i think do. so i think so and um i'm getting better at this i've been really practicing my patience over the years and i'm, I'm just i think i feel like at least i'm getting better better in it but also i feel like because of i because i study so many of the companies i get stronger conviction still can go wrong for instance my biggest mistake here was castellan this year although it's hard to call the mistake uh from one side but maybe i should learn more about this but i just have more convictions like about hp inc i just have a lot of conviction i understand why people hate it uh, i just don't understand it from a fundamental point of view yeah if people think that laptops are a dead business well I don't think this is. I don't see us quickly changing as consumers from a laptop kind of device. And HP is a big player there and that's such a yield with those buybacks, um, mostly out of cash flow, but sometimes a little bit more also leveraging up. I think I just have a lot of conviction for those and that, that makes it easier to invest as well, right? Uh, and you, And what we often say, you can't buy conviction from others. No. Yeah, uh, if you, if you, if you, they buy a stock because I or you recommended it. Yeah, the 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 person will probably sell it just as quick as as, as when there is a little bit of a headwind. Yeah, I mean you can't you can't buy experience, can you? That that's essentially what you what you're explaining there. You have more yeah. conviction, but really what you're saying is you have more experience. You've learned from your mistakes. You you know what to look for. You know what mistakes you've made in the past, and that's what gives you that that. Conviction. And I know that I will still make mistakes. Yeah, I will. I, I know that out of the ten stock picks, I will be probably four or five wrong. Yeah, yeah. In how it will play out, but the other four or five, uh, three of them will probably play out as I thought, and two will will blow me away. And Upfi is a good example of that. Microsoft is a good example of it, and there are a few others. And those, those, just those two will carry the whole portfolio forward from the five other where it was less than i expected and those five less than I expected doesn't mean that they went bankrupt it was yeah. just less than i expected yeah exactly exactly well i'll tell you some of my main reflections this year and and one of, one of the biggest learnings for me i think this 
this year. I remember sitting down doing a, a goals session with, with you and another member of uh, Phil at, at the start of yeah. last year. And I was talking through some of my goals, particularly in around option trading and, and trading. And I remember you you stopping me at one point and saying, be careful. <laughs> you, you didn't tell me not, not to do it or anything like that. You just said, be careful. And But the thing about it is, me as a person, you could tell me a hundred times not to do something or, or whatever. I have to live it. I have to do it. And that's how I learn. And what I learned this year is there's a hundred percent there's no such thing as a free a free lunch. I've made good money from option trading when the market was going up. I mean, I suppose anyone you could close your eyes, pick a company at random, and chances are it was going to increase. So selling cash secure secure puts was was okay, even if it dropped, it was coming back up relatively soon. This year we found that that, that doesn't happen and. That's where I would note such thing as a free launch. Because I'm holding a lot of companies, three or four companies, I think, which I would never in a million years own if I was not doing that strategy. I know talking to other members of the community, they're in similar situations. So I think it's it's option trading, first of all, is hard. It's it's not as easy as some people make. And uh, I mean, you can obviously make good money, but it comes back to that risk again. How much do you want yeah. to risk? How much how much have you got? And when a market tanks like this, you're going to end up holding holding companies. Um, so that's my biggest biggest learning this year. So there's no such thing as a free launch. So options and dividend captures and all these fancy tricks and, and all that, they can work, but they're not guaranteed to work. And I think for the time and effort, sometimes uh, the KISS simple or the KISS strategy is is better. Keep it simple, invest in, in good companies and forget about forget about all the rest. So that's that's my my biggest learning. And I know we haven't spoke about goals, but one of my main goals for next year is refocusing my thinking me refocusing my portfolio i'm going to try and stay away from all that gimmicky stuff as much as possible and just focus purely on dividend growth investing that's my that's that's my main takeaway for, for yeah. this year and it's funny that you say that um here because i also do a little bit of option trading but i do really in my spare time when i have time left let's say so I have, a, I have around 10k on the sidelines uh, there that I trade a little bit options with, but I'm not using the full extent of the 10k with the options that I have outstanding. Sometimes I have just, you know, yeah. uh, and one option outstanding for 3k of worth of investment, right? So overall, bottom line, I made 536 euro on those 10k. So it's like a 5.3% yield uh here let's say that it was for half of that was probably all the time uh having an option against it so but i feel like you do option trading with a different goal in mind than what i did so i was doing it to increase the income basically getting premium so that yeah. that's that was my goal i feel like when you were doing it you were saying i want to own bass f at 35 euro so that's what you said it at yeah or I want to yeah. sell back F at 50 euro in your yeah. selling cover calls. So you weren't focusing as much on the premium and increase that. You were focusing on, I want to own this company. I want to own it at this price. I don't mind getting paid to wait for it to come yeah. down there. And I think the that's pay to the, wait. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the difference in, in our tier. Now, I, I don't mind doing that next year, but certainly doing it to trace to increase income or to to go after premium is is definitely not 100 mm. percent. so unless i see a company that i want to own 100 shares of at a particular price i won't be doing option trading next year yeah okay interesting uh derek really interesting and congratulations on becoming wider wiser again wasn't <laughs> it uh, i i think because i'm reading charlie munger's book still right the um um the kind of encyclopedia the almanac and it was written there like and i think it was based on this american guy what was his name um this american president that's also on the dollar bill uh what's uh, his name uh, uh, benjamin, franklin. benjamin franklin yeah. Franklin, yes, franklin yeah and i think he wrote one time we get all too uh, uh soon and wise too late yeah and and i guess that applies to many things in life but i also feel that applies to me like with the knowledge i have today but knowledge is also you know not just only having the information and the right discipline it is also experience and i think you brought that also up again you need to sometimes make mistakes you need to 
or are also positive uh, outcomes so that you build confidence build trust that you learn those little paths right that that nobody can tell you because it's also yeah. related really to your own character your understanding yourself is maybe just as important here yeah i think so like you mentioned it earlier you can't buy somebody else's stock picks you can't you can't do it based off somebody else because everybody feels differently or reacts differently to different situations and i know personally myself i have to do something i have to do something if if i don't do it i'll always sit there and wonder well maybe i could have done it better or maybe maybe yeah. i could do this or maybe i could do that turns out i can't do it any better but i had to live it to to know that and then i'm i'm, yeah. I'm content and i can i can move on but it's all part uh, all part of learning i think your, your mother must love you right <laughs> well, not my mother my wife she kn she knows as well there's no talking to me and i have to do it the hard she always tells me i always do things the hard way but that's um that's how i've always been i suppose <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> Ah, uh, nice one. I'm probably uh, the same, by the way. Otherwise, we wouldn't be on the dividend talk show either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my my second my second learning this year is we talked about dividend growth and we like dividend growers and stay away from high yielders. My portfolio yield is six percent. Maybe Hallelujah. I like maybe I like high yielders a little bit more than what I what I think. Um, I do I do have some closed end funds in there which are high yielding so they're typically between six eight uh, maybe there's some ten percent in there now um so that's that's what's bringing it up quite a bit but i do also have the likes of chesnara or tria um and those types of companies as well so i have a lot of high yielders um, and again i think i've mentioned this before i think definitely the focus next year is to focus a little bit more on quality after what i've seen this year and as a byproduct of that I do want to read, I think I said this to you, at least one annual report every single week. That's that's wow. my that's one of my goals. Just that's one a week. Commitment. I want yeah. to analyze it. I want to take notes. I want to compare them. And if I don't come out a better investor after doing that, then I'll, I'll give up. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Nice one. And it's interesting also uh, that you say that because the top of, um, I said the top of, um, the top dividend income producers in my portfolio are also high yields like omega yeah. healthcare shell uh let's say up fee and such overall i will do, run the numbers next year but i won't have seen double digit dividend growth organic dividend growth on my portfolio it will probably a, a low single digit yield like three four percent my target is six percent but i need to recognize for the fact that my portfolio yield is now 3.75 percent and um, I said, uh, my plan is on 3.25%. So I'm a little bit higher in the yield than I, uh, uh, according to my plan. But also I've got still this 10% of non-dividend stocks. And here I need to think about what am I going to do with it? It is really to nurture my, my, my curiosity of the value investor mindset. So probably I need to keep it. However, it does impact my overall performance because this 10% would otherwise make my portfolio yield, let's say, 4.25% uh, or something like that, right? 4.15%. And But the 6% is really a lot, Derek. That means like you have a lot of high, high, high yielders to compensate a little bit for the lower, lower yielders like Schneider Electric or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I, c I could probably bring in one or two low yield. Like we, we talk a lot, like likes the schneider as they are you have microsoft yeah. i could probably build them out a bit yeah. more apple i could even maybe consider apple i know they're they're, they're starting to drop in price so they might mm -hmm. even become attractive to me at, at some point um yeah. so it, it's it's interesting i wasn't expecting that i'm just looking at, at it maybe it's a little bit skewed because some of the uk companies you know that when they report back it, you have to divide it by a thousand so it might actually come down a small bit but it's um, still still quite a lot higher than I expected. I think it was only around four percent this time last year. So it's, it's it definitely added a lot more high yielders to the portfolio this year. Nice one, nice one. Yeah, and then then there are still two things I want to touch on because this is all around inv in investing. But there's one other reflection that I had. It's like how life good is. Yeah, that's the nice thing about dividend investor. We don't worry so much. Uh, we have our debts under control. We've got already passive income incoming. We have a freedom, uh, freedom. Uh, I said sorry, emergency fund. So that already removes kind of the financial stress. Then we had COVID. 
you know, it was really horrible two years kind of uh, locked up uh, as society. But this year it all opened up. So I went a few times on vacation. I did many nice stuff. Also, you know, we live near Warsaw. So a lot of entertainers are coming here, singers, uh, theater, all these kinds of things. So I really felt alive this year, which was also really important right because uh, i don't live uh, only to work i actually to the opposite that's why i want to achieve financial freedom and financial independence right um so from that point of view this was also if you take the two preceding years into consideration this is definitely one of the best years in the last decade uh, just for that reason yeah easy easy uh, i know i've i've quite enjoyed myself as well we, we've had to postpone many a friday night to a sunday because so much is happening but after being locked up for two years once you get that freedom you go out and enjoy it you see friends you see family i mean you have to you have to go and enjoy it i mean as you said we're not here to work we're not here just as investors are to to generate income either you have to you have to live your life you said you get old too soon that that's all that happens so once you get an opportunity you need to you need to go after it and enjoy it and definitely a lot more entertainment a lot more drinking this year and i've done over the last yes. year <laughs> it's, been, it's, been, it's been crazy but it's uh definitely enjoyed the last two years but also what, what i've what i've learned on that is life after COVID. so so during COVID, I, I started the blog and we started the podcast and i started working with sure dividend on top of my job as well and that was easy to do during during lockdown during COVID, because you're inside all the time and a lot more time in your hands and you're only talking to people either online or on, on messaging yeah, services exactly. or whatever so yeah, a lot more time i don't have that time anymore so i'm thinking next year just to refocus pretty much on sure dividend because i get paid to do it and i really enjoy working for them and also dividend talk and um, because yeah. I, I really enjoy this so i think what that means for my blog is i will probably shut it down set up something new just for for dividend talk do proper show notes and maybe sprinkle one or two of my monthly reports in there as well as as we go along so definitely nice that's fun. where my my focus will be sure dividend and dividend talk going, going yeah. forward yeah so i still need to think about it a li little bit myself um here because i think you're making really wise choices i also um where i was writing one blog a week blog post a week and sometimes even two um uh, and, and during COVID, i'm now like one or two a month Although uh, I, I create more videos now than I, I did before, but also the videos are not regular. Because for me, priority is my personal life. And when time permits, I do blogging and YouTube. I try to do uh, a video on, on YouTube every weekend. But for instance, now already I didn't do for the last two weekends because Christmas was there. I need to prepare uh, food and everything. And then I just don't have time for it, right? And I don't want to sacrifice the time with the kids and the family uh, to be behind my computer um, uh, recording a YouTube video, right? But uh, I, I, I intend to continue doing what I'm doing, like one, two blog posts uh, a month um videos and then of course dividend talk is the number one priority because first of all it helps to be doing this together with someone else because it's an extra motivation uh we can't skip a weekend yeah from that point of view um but also just because it's a passion yeah well, why would i not do something that's which is my passion so yeah really good and by the way congrats by the way to the facebook community so we have now 893 members in the facebook community and I think at the start of this year, we had 300 something, but I think that was after an announcement that we were creating this group. So it's yeah. uh, really, really getting more and more alive. So maybe also a call out to the people that are listening. If you aren't yet uh, part of the Dividend Talk group on Facebook, please join us. You know, uh, Don't be a stranger, introduce yourself, write a post uh, uh, check, uh, explaining what your goal is and, and what, you're, what you're looking for. I'm sure someone can help you in the community um we'll put the the link in the description of the show notes so if you're on spotify listening this or wherever you're listening is click on it and look in the description and there you will see the link to the dividend talk face group you need to answer two questions when you do that well you're automatically uh, submitted uh, into the group so don't worry but uh, it's amazing this community today again someone i think his name is matthias he posted the whole bull thesis on intel really really good and you know, this is what I love about being part of a community and being in the community. And and this is Facebook, also on Twitter, right? Um, we have quite a large following as well, lots of engagements. And 
I would honestly say that it also makes me a better investor here because it's not about copying people's investment style. It's more the inspiration you get, the questions you get that trigger your thinking. And really ask yourself, like, are am I making the right choices? But also asking questions to the community, right? Um, so this whole community engagement, I think this is even probably the, the real fuel to all the passion that we have for this. Yeah, yeah. It, it, as you said, it's definitely made us, well, made me a better investor because you get challenged, you get, I mean, you, you post an idea and somebody will challenge you or question you or, or not even directly. Maybe they ask you something that makes you think, no, hold on, maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe maybe there, there is another point. And I do really like it when I say something and not everybody agrees and someone gives me yeah. a, an alternative perspective possibly yeah. a negative because it, it's easy when when you're not anal analyzing a stock it's always easy to focus on the good stuff it, yeah, it exactly. is when you're when you're reading and that's because you already kind of know you like the company you've heard about it you, you've seen some things you like so you, sometimes maybe your brain is trying to trick you into always focusing on the good so i, I do like yeah. i do like it when i post something and someone says well on buddy <laughs> you're missing yeah. something yeah so yeah and I, I know this might be a bit cultural bias as well but I, I, I always feel a little bit more friction uh, with American uh, people in social media um, because often they don't like to hear that when you when you kind of challenge them. While when I'm dealing with European people, people it's like I'm get, getting challenged from every corner. Like you get a left uppercut, a right uppercut. Yeah, and I, I don't know if you see this, but in social media, I really see the difference between the European community and the American community. Not disrespecting any of our American followers here, but I do see that, um, uh, for instance, people with a German background, Dutch background, French background, Polish background, they're quite direct in their culture, right? So you also see it back in the communities and on social media. And I like that really, really a lot because I guess it's also culture that I'm grown up with uh, and grown yeah. up in. Or there's, there's definitely, even within Europe, there's definitely different cultures from, from west to east. So, you know, Ireland were not maybe as direct as the Dutch or the, the Germans. And sometimes yeah. it, it took me a little bit to, to get used to that because you speak to someone from Germany or, or from the Netherlands, they just tell you how it is and that's it. Nothing else. There's no pleasantries. There's no interviews. And there's nothing. It's Derek, that shit, move on. <laughs> Where, whereas from Ireland, <laughs> from Ireland, you kind of go, well, look, Derek, you, maybe it's not a good idea. idea. Might be a good idea, but maybe it's not. It's yeah. it's completely different. But um, Anna, it's 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 good to see all sides of of Europe and America as well, just to see it culturally yeah. how how everyone is different. Exactly, exactly. Good. So, listeners' questions. We have quite a few to get through again. So we'll we might jump into the first one from michael g and he has said he has approximately two years before retirement when if at all would you pivot from a dividend growth portfolio to a high yielding dividend portfolio would you do this gradually within the next two years or wait till actual retirement yeah this is a this is a difficult one and i'm still quite far away from uh, let's say the 65 uh, years of age or 67 so i find it a bit hard to to answer that i saw the question of course already a bit earlier so i've been pondering a lot about this i guess it really depends on how much cash you need if you need if you want significantly more cash I would take the opportunity now in the stock market to pivot already to a higher yield uh, portfolio because there are just many, many, you know, good buys out there. Um, but I could also a bit more conservative, just reinvest the dividends that are coming in into high yield stocks, see how that goes. And then in, in two years, if you see that it's not bringing in enough cash, Start following, start selling maybe your low yielders, you like under one percent or under two percent, and exchange them for I don't know three or four percent. But then you're already doubling your dividend income, right? At the same time, so maybe I would go more for that option when I hear myself talking. Yeah, and in, in, in both cases, he assume has six to nine months enough cash to to survive on anyway. So. I, I think I think it's hard. Definitely now is, is you're probably getting companies at a higher yield than what you would before. So I don't know what the threshold of, of high yield here is, but maybe 5%. But there's definitely some 
good companies that you won't maybe get that in two years time so i would look into transition not not all of it but maybe look at the companies that are both quality have a good dividend growth but are historically high yielding at the moment and and start by investing in them once see how that goes and and then and then take it from there but i i'm definitely more in favor of gradually doing it as well yeah good one matt barker what are your goals for 2023 outside of dividend growth investing to get in a better shape uh, physically i mean i'm i'm already 40 plus and i just feel like that this uh, little temple is uh, slowly starting to become rusty so i i want to i, I want to get rid of that feeling i don't know if it's even possible but um yeah i need to do a little bit more sporting and i'm sporting already twice a week but maybe i need to start doing it four or five times a week um i just generally i i guess i want to get more physical strength yeah um uh, that that's always good so i have something similar to that in in terms of we have this event over here called to hell and back i don't know if you've if have something similar but it's no. it's an obstacle course but it's quite grueling and and there's a lot of going through muck and over obstacles and under obstacles and swimming and it's um it's quite good so i've already signed up to do that in june so i need to get fit enough to, to do that it's also an eight kilometer run while you're doing all this so you have to, you have to have a certain level of fitness to to be able to do it so i had that i want to complete a, a marathon or maybe a half marathon before the end of the year as well so them two kind of go hand in hand um outside of that I, I i showed you i told you this before this i i had a presentation of my goals financial goals and non-financial goals that i that i gave to my wife um and part of this outside of dividend growth investing i know my wife wants to pay down the mortgage so i want to pay down additional money off the mortgage clear down debts all, all that kind of thing um but the big ones for me are getting fit complete hell and back and run run a marathon before the end of the year nice one so tell me how hell was once you, you reached it assuming you would come back yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll show i'll share a video with you this after the show you'll see it it's actually it looks class anyone that's done it has loved it but i'd say once you're in the middle of it it, <laughs> it looks quite treacherous i have to say nice one so i'm probably sitting a lot behind the computer reading once a week and then your report is not yeah. going to help <laughs> no that's not that's not going to help so i have to i have to get out i already have a plan I, i'm training five days a week for it well i will be training five days a week for this so <laughs> yeah nice one um and our has asked us regarding investing strategy when starting and building a portfolio in the beginning of one's journey is it smart to consolidate your positions and build them one by one to the size you aspire to or would you build more positions simultaneously yeah i'm doing it more simultaneously and the reason for that is simple uh, on this i don't want to catch a falling knife as an example so i also for me investing everything like straight let's say that you want one single position size is uh, let's say 5k I wouldn't want to put 5k in those let's say five months all in the same stock because it's kind of the same as timing the market um but this is also the value investor talking to me if you're for instance buying over those five months just the stock at a 3.5 percent yield which a 50 percent payout ratio seven percent dividend growth potential annualized well why not right because that's pure dividend growth investing there's so much candy out there in the stock market the stock market that i couldn't even have and i have a lot of patience but i couldn't sit there for five months only putting the money in the same stock it, 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 it just my 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 mind doesn't allow that i i i've always flip-flopped through this in the beginning i was spreading it out and then i started focusing on one company a month and, and so on but i i think i've come to the conclusion whenever i go to invest i look what's in the market that's attractive that's on my watch list and and i buy that that's that's it i don't i don't think you need to overthink it especially in the beginning i don't think you need to overthink it at all uh marek has asked us what are your benchmarks of investments my own goals that i set uh in the in my uh, financial plan so that's a 3.25 percent uh 
yield on cost when investing and a 6% uh, dividend growth, uh, organic dividend growth on my holdings. Yeah, uh, pretty and much dividend you? growth. Dividend growth is is my, my main benchmark. Yeah, and then maybe a disclaimer here, Marek. That's why, because my the, because of the construction of my portfolio, I cannot compare it to an S and P five hundred or something like that. It's not the same. It would be comparing apples with pears. I'm not investing for total return either. Although I do think that total return will be an outcome out of my investing strategy. It, I, I just can't compare it. Also, not with a dividend ETF because I'm investing every month in a different stock. So at 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 a certain value. So the only thing I came to the conclusion that I can compare myself with is to the goal that I've set when I started building my portfolio, because that will tell me when I will retire or not. All the rest for me will be just distracting me from reaching my goal. Yeah. Uh, Matthias has asked, what do you think about Union Pacific? So is this a railway company, right? And uh, I just don't remember if it, if it was also a Buffett stock, but... Um, Look, two and a half percent yield, forty-four percent payout ratio, fifteen year, fifteen percent five-year dividend growth uh, track record, ten percent dividend growth uh, over the last year, sixteen years of dividend growth in total. I mean, what's not to like? We know the durability of these kinds of businesses. Uh, again, my 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 screener will be two point seventy-five percent, so it should drop another ten percent in share price, and it would hit my screening criteria. I think it's a really nice uh, uh, stock. I haven't done a valuation, but from that point of view, yeah, I think these are great businesses to own. Yeah, strong strong mode. I think we spoke about these last week or the week before. Canadian one as well, Canadian Union Pacific. Yeah. Strong modes, not going out of business. They they are needed. We know when there were strikes, there was huge, huge problems. So there's there's um there's still definitely a need for them. So I don't think you can go wrong with, with a company like that. Um, Tim has asked us, do you invest in Asian companies? If so, what are you specifically looking for? No, I, I don't invest in Asian companies, um, except for Alibaba <laughs> that I have in my non-dividend part of the portfolio, this 10% bucket there. And it doesn't build any confidence for the future, let's say like that. But um, generally speaking, Tim, I don't have the bandwidth also to start understanding Asian markets, Asian market dynamics. I have already quite some exposure to Asia via my holdings like Unilever, Danone. So um, I'm still benefiting from the rise there. And it's also sometimes the fees is like Unilever, why I buy those companies. But so far, I've not bought anything yet in Asia. It doesn't mean the door is closed, but it's also not really open. Yeah, I, I would be similar to what Tim said. If, if I was going into Asia, I would probably look at the ETF route. It's, mm. it's, you don't have to understand the market as, as much. Uh, one company I would really like to own is Keyence. Um, they are a Japanese company. Yeah. Oh, man, they're up there with, with Schneider in terms of usability and customer service and products that they, that they use. In my job, Keyence and Schneider are the two the two. Um, top of the range so I, that's a company i would like to own but to be honest with you i'm, I'm similar i prefer to stick to european and and the us i understand them a lot more easily i don't think i want to throw asia into the mix so if if i was going to go down that route i would i would choose etfs yeah yeah nice one um so we got a question from uh, this, dice 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 dice, 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 dice. Um, so three three parts to this question any ceos to be fired next year none that i can think of yet <laughs> uh ibm what about arvin krishna <laughs> 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 I, I had to I had to mention ibm before the end of the year yeah um no no he doesn't need to be fired uh, however they should Cut his spin bonuses off. and everything, and spin him off, and 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 keep the rest. Maybe that is still working. What they should do is they should spin everything off that is non Red Hat related, with the CEO with it, and call the call the Red Hat business just IBM them. <laughs> that's, that's because in reality, idea. this is what it's coming down to. If you look five years into the future with this company, 
Yeah, I agree. Okay, which stock do you regret most having invested into? Yeah, it, it, it must have been, uh, if you look at 2022, right? It must have been Castellum. Um, I'm so disappointed about the, the mess that happened there in the board. I totally didn't see it coming. I'm still thinking like, what could I have done different other than maybe when I said about the CEO, he looks like a bit of a prima donna. Yeah, thinking too good about himself. Um, I haven't really, okay, I, I had some capital loss, but I reinvested it in Cebus and a few other companies at a similar yield. So it's not like I lost really dividend income. I will do the do the math still. If it is, it, if it was, it was really minor. Um, it must have been that one. Yeah. Yeah. Mine, mine is a non-dividend stock, by the way. It's Carnival Cruises. Um, got it. Got it completely <laughs> wrong. <laughs> actually, I actually, gen genuinely thought, I genuinely thought that cruises will come back this year. Um, but that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a hell of a hypothesis <laughs> <laughs> yeah there we go um which stock do you wish you had invested into Novo Nordisk Novo Nordisk or ASML when it did there did quite oh ASML quite as well yeah yeah, yeah yeah we should have had it in the 400 right it was yeah okay RZMF um Hey guys, thanks a lot for all the great content. Really appreciate it. If interests keep rising, would there be a level where you'd rather invest in bonds than dividend stocks? No, 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 no. There's nothing for me for bonds. Maybe, um, and I did it actually already. I put some of my emergency fund in a, in a how is it? Uh, it's called CD, a cash deposit. Yeah, in a cash yeah. deposit. So, because I'm not touching the money anyway, so better get some yield on it. No um not not necessarily with bonds for me but definitely if interest rates keep rising and mortgage rates get to double digits i would definitely consider investing more in paying down the mortgage rather than mm. investing in, in yeah. dividend stocks that's yeah okay div collector um, a scenario here against your will and with a gun to your head you guys have to value a company that doesn't make a profit how would you approach this I think you you like to answer this one. <laughs> Basically, I would just roll back the clock to Twitter 2020 when everybody was was doing this. <laughs> every every company was not profitable and going to the moon, and and so on. You had lots of companies. What, so what are some of the big ones. Okay. So you would take us. Uh, I I mean, we had C Limited. Uh, yeah, see, that's the one. Yeah, that's that's one of the big ones. Um, I mean, it's it's really hard to value a company that doesn't make a profit but particularly for look if you're looking at dividend growth stocks yeah they need to they need to make a profit to generate the cash flow to pay you a dividend yeah those companies that are not making a profit now are genuinely probably startups are close to starting up or just have an idea yeah. coming off the ground are these tech companies that, that we talked about and i don't know how you Honestly, so honestly, I, I, so I guess I know what you would do. Then you would go on Twitter, find someone with hundred to two hundred thousand followers, pay them like I don't know, hundred two hundred dollars for pumping up uh, a small cap, yeah, and and with an insane kind of uh, bullish story behind it. You would just run a pump and dump scheme, get it to the moon, five fold, six fold, pull out. And then suddenly you're quiet, and you say, "Oh yeah, and you short it at the same time, right?" At the uh, when you pull out, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. short and then, yeah, yeah, then yeah, okay, profit on the way back down. But honestly, I don't, I don't know how you would, how you do that. If somebody had a gun to my head, I would lie. I would make up a value. I would say something like okay. thirty times earnings. <laughs> and give so that, give that is a, I, I would look. I would I would look smart. I would just look textbook smart at the moment because I would use the hockey stick model that you learn at uh, business school. So I would just make a prognosis of uh, the free cash flows. Let's say for the next um, ten years or five years, probably better five year for a non profitable company. I would assume, for instance, revenue growth, and then I would assume a certain cash flow yield um, over those five years, and it will be every year a little bit different. And with that, suddenly. Uh, maybe and depending on how I envision the business, if in, if it becomes cash pos positive in the fourth or the fifth year, then I, I will model that in, and then I will tell you like, you know, what the value is in my opinion. Yeah, something like that. But would I invest in it? Probably not. 
I, I remember we had Wolf of Harcourt Street on on the show before, yeah. and we asked him a similar question on how, how to do that. And I think his synopsis was quite close or similar to what what you just said there. Make a lot of assumptions, and from there you 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 pick a, a multiple value that that suits. Yeah, but his portfolio crashed. Yeah, I think uh, probably when he was on the show, his portfolio was an all time high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now it looks like a Mount Everest in the distance. Yeah, it's a tough. It was a, a tough gig. Maybe he's, he's pivoted since, but yeah. it's um, definitely, I, definitely. I know he did. I know he did. I know that he's still uh, around. He went on a nice uh, long worldwide trip. He's really enjoying life, so that's good to see. Good, good. Uh, David N. Gardner, if you could have exposure to only one sector for the next decade, which sector would you pick? Consumer staples. It's the one sector that I sleep, uh, yeah, most well at night with. Or healthcare. I'd probably choose healthcare. Yeah, healthcare. I get pipeline risks, and I feel like I need to monitor and observe that a little bit more. But uh, by Ahold, Walmart, Target, and then some of those companies, I will sleep well at night. Really. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Fire Zoom. What are your financial goals for our financial independence? Do you have a target like 2K from dividends per month or how do you calculate it? Yeah, so I'm not entirely open yet on on, 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 on this for, for privacy uh, reasons, but um, I have a 50% savings rate on my income. So if, if that means that if it reaches half of my income, uh, th so effectively covers all my expenses, that is for me financial independence. Um, I might continue to work. I might even quit earlier. Maybe sometimes I dream about that. Let's assume that I'm on 75% of um, financial independence. How cool would it be to just work two days a week, do some Uber driving to, to, to earn the cash and for the rest, do a bit of blogging, YouTube, you know, yeah. visit, uh, be a soccer coach or something like that, football coach at the club nearby. So you don't need to be necessarily 100% covering all your expenses to be able to make significant changes in your life. But yeah. so far, I like my job still a lot. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I do have goals. I have a five-year plan here. This year, I earned 3,000. 2023, I want to earn 4,000. And by 2027, I want to earn close to 1,000 a month um, in dividend income. So nice, that's, nice, nice. That's that's my five-year plan. Let's see how it goes. Um, hobby investor. The consumer health from Johnson & Johnson is pretty much flat in revenue growth. They recently acquired, uh, what's that company? Ab Abomed, um, mm -hmm. which indicates they're already focused on growing the other two segments, which we, we already kind of knew. Um, what would you consider selling the spin-off company to double down on Johnson & Johnson or any other stock? um i i honestly don't know yet uh, he's right that the consumer business was flat i might sell it but i will probably not sell j and j and i would also probably not double down there's more risk introduced with the new company of johnson johnson and this risks probably should equate to a little bit of a better yield uh, for me yeah um i will definitely be selling the spin-off as we said it is flat it's been flat for for years now i don't see any need of having that in my portfolio oh, yeah. um, what i'll buy with it i don't know yet i don't know we'll see we'll see mm -hmm. um yaris looking back at 2022 what stock do you regret not buying i think we've already yeah. mentioned that um asml for me yeah and um, dividend dot exe what does your realistic budget look like for next year what's your saving rate for 2022 I, I don't know it yet. I still need to calculate it. Yeah, my savings rates, I, I do the same amount. It's pretty much just over 40%, 40, 40% 40 this year. It'll be yeah. the same next year. So. For me, it should be around 50% because that's what I always do if uh, once my income, uh, my salary is deposited, that's what I transfer and I had no no issues there. So, But maybe I overspend a little bit compared to... Uh, so draw a little bit still from my savings. I don't know. I need to check that. Yeah. Um, Tuck Unbo has asked us your 
our opinion on Ferrari as a dividend growth stock. I think you mentioned them as having pricing power the other day. Yeah, Ferrari this definitely has pricing power. It's not as a dividend stock, it's not interesting me so much too low of a yield. Secondly, the dividend growth is is okay, but it's they had to cut it, I believe, during COVID. Um, so it's not it's not it's not like an ASML in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, so I find ASML having a better profile. But Ferrari is is a stock that is hard to not fall in love with if you're a Formula One fan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Colin has asked me, he's investing for over a year, how do I deal with taxation? Um, basically, Colin, I log on to Ross. Um, I was, I was, I had my own business, so I can log on and do it on Ross. You can log on to, if you don't have Ross, you can log on to revenue.ie and you go in, there's a form there, you just fill it out. There's a section there to input how much you've received in dividends. You put that in, it calculates your tax credits based out next year. And then if you're old, old or need to pay any tax, it calculates that as well this year. So it's quite straightforward. Um, Revenue.ie, or if you're a sole trader or business, go on to Ross, R O S dot IE. Um, keep walking. What, uh, what is your expectation for dividend growth in 2023? Prefer European stocks or USA stocks? Any advice? um i think my dividend income will go up because i invest in kind of dividend aristocrats so i expect that there's dividend growth i honestly really don't know what to expect i would be happy with an average of six seven percent i haven't made it in the last two years probably also not this year because of the way my uh, portfolio is composed um and if i prefer european or usa it doesn't really matter i prefer great businesses and whether they are Europe or USA is less relevant unless it's in Switzerland with a 35% tax, then I have more, then I have tougher requirements on the dividend yield because I look at dividend yield after tax. So it's no, I just want to invest in great businesses that I feel comfortable that can continue growing the dividend uh, 10, 20 years from now. Yeah. I, I don't think I expect a 56% growth, dividend growth again next year. But hey, no, you, no, no, no. You you never know. It depends how much capital I, I can deploy into, into my portfolio. Mm. But um, like that, I do expect probably at least 20%. Um, yeah, 20% or so, something like that. I would sign um, up for that. European stocks or USA stocks, no preference, really. Um, as you said, good businesses at good prices. So whatever, whichever good derek this is this were all the questions and a really nice topic about reflection and i want to thank you so much for 2022 and all the shows we did another 52 i guess or 51 so it's been quite a year we have many guests on the show like it started all with the dividend guy our canadian uh peer also fellow podcaster and many more like Mike Blazier, Life with Dividends and, 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 and such. And yeah, just thank you to all of those. But also definitely thank you for all the time spending time with me on the Friday evening, sometimes on the Sunday morning, Sunday evening, sometimes Saturday mornings. But uh, knowing that you're not with your family at that time. And I appreciate that a lot because I truly enjoy this. So thank you for that. And um, after this show... So in half an hour from now, we have booked probably our tickets that I will visit you in the second or second weekend of January. So I'm really looking forward for that. Yeah, we get to do a live show in 2023. I'm quite quite looking forward to that. It's it's been a been a heck of a year. Episode 129 not out. It's it's incredible. Love doing this. Love chatting to you. Love all our guests. And most of all, the community. They keep us honest. They keep us <laughs> keep us engaged. Um, I honestly think. It's the best community out there. Uh, it's it's really passionate. We get lots of questions, lots of emails, and and everything. It's it's all really really appreciated. But again, thank you, thank you for taking the time to to listen to me, to let me rant when I have to, and even some of my ideas around option trading for not calling me stupid at the time. So thank you, thank you for that. But here's to 2023. All our listeners have a good New Year's Eve, and let's make next year our best one yet. <laughs>